after the championship, the top player who went on to the UFC came and saw me and said, you made the right call. You know, the outcome itself is, is really the ultimate measurement of it. Uh, and that's sort of what my experience was there at a high school level. So, Dean, have you ever been involved in coaching selection, coaching naming at different levels and uh, who's going to do what job in your work?
automatically were granted a Hungarian passport as well if they were of Hungarian descent. Therefore, they could vote. So they put together this wonderful idea, but they, you know, from the south it was strictly a political thing to garner votes, and they hadn't really put any thought into the, you know, the, um, the vision, the mission, and um, certainly not in the HR uh, portion of that. Like, how do you staff something if you don't know what direction you're going? So that was kind of my most recent um, uh, brush with coach selection evaluation, um, and it was from an inheritance point of view. And so I got them to backtrack and and basically, like I said, figure something out from a leadership point of view, and then let's start to put that out to the coaches and educate them. And now you can see, are, do the coaches even want to be part of it? If this is what the mission and the values are going to be. And then we can start to go down this road. But until then, all this bluster and this three, four hour discussion was a waste of time. Now, uh, when you, you were selecting coaches in minor hockey in Canada, uh, what was your role with that organization? Um, the official role, the four years I was on the board, was first vice president. So the role, each, each um, position had a, um, you know, it, it had a clearly identified uh, list of bullets that said, what our roles were supposed to be within the organization and those are on the website and those were presented to us before we um you know put our name forward to, to get voted in and so one of the things that, was, that fell under my area was um, coach selection and coach evaluation so it was, it was essentially player and coach development um so it's kind of like a a volunteer technical director, I suppose. Um, and so those, those things, you know, and, and discipline, discipline was under there. I mean, I, there's a whole bunch of things, but, you know, to your question, those, those areas were under that, under that um, first VP role. Did you have a mission statement in your organization that provided the sense of what you were doing, a uh, perspective that would provide a solid foundation of support for what you were doing? No, again, um, when I went in there, that was the first thing I said. <laughs> start with the mission statement, like, what, what do you guys stand for? What do you want, what do you want the association to be known for? Um, and so from the outset, that's where, where we started. We, we started to build that right away. Um, Again, it's a volunteer board, so it, it took quite some time um, for them to get it done. Uh, going back in memory, I would think it took almost a year. But I, I said, look, like you got to have this clearly defined, and we need to get it up on the website. We need to make sure it's transparent. We need to, you know, all the stakeholders need to know, the parents, the, the kids, everybody. I was Super. At the same time, for the same number of years. Cocker Miner Soccer Wally it was the same. Nothing. They never had mission statement. Like, you know, it was, I, I couldn't believe it. Well, Wally, be, besides uh, football, like junior and senior, did you did you coach other sports at, when you were teaching in high school? Myself? Yeah. Yes, I, uh, foot, football, wrestling, and track. My favorite sport to coach was wrestling. To this day, it's still wrestling. One-on-one, uh, -on -one, no distractions, and, and the competition itself is just man against man, woman against woman. And uh, dealing with them, it just took out all the baggage in a one-on-one -on -one setting that you didn't have to deal with in team sports. Now in high school, there was no baggage for me because I coached in the way that I felt was the right way ethically. And it got results that kept me, um, you know, that I could be proud of. 
But more important than that, the ethical side of it is uh, where I found, you know, develop that kind of philosophical roots. But I, football, wrestling, and track, I, I learned to coach, coaching other sports. But at the same time, I made a point of really pursuing the education pieces. Uh, doing the hockey was one thing, but the most important part of my education, by far more useful, was theory one, two, and three, and the modules that I completed in theory four. And uh, I, I have to say that the theory four modules, I only got to complete them because Dave King would send me to the courses on the weekends they were on in Toronto because he was coaching. He didn't have time to go. So I would take a module or two modules on a weekend, come back, and the mental training module for coaches and the mental training module for players, I put into my school curriculum in a sports site 10, 20, and 30 format and played with it all the time with my phys ed classes and applied it with my students. So coaching football, wrestling, and track, individual sports, uh, boys and girls, uh, I, I really had a laboratory to experiment with. And Tim, when I was with the national team, I had a vision about every national player goes to a school, a high school. High school teachers are physically educated, kinesiology, biomechanics, and all the resources we acquired by coaching the national team, they needed to be in their hands. So those modules I played with, learned from, and applied as a coach with the national team, and then what I learned from the experts there it's just a, a wealth of information. The high school sports setting, grade 10 to 12, uh, they can make a bigger difference with the, the kids that get into Phys Ed 30, they're, they're going to be your athletes that are going to be elite. Not all of them, but many of them will go on. And uh, I just, that was one of my visions was, being on the national team, having taught school, and trying to share that with the high school phys ed departments, going through the, uh, whether it's the Catholic school system or the public system, going through the uh, sports, edu sports uh, leaders, that was sort of a, a wishful thinking module to do that I was able to live with and experiment with for 20, well, not, it would have been about 15 years when I was working with Dave in the 80s. Now, so that sort of explains a little bit of uh, the, the background of where I came from on coaching. And, and, and how, how many years coaching all those sports, like football, track, <coughs> wrestling? How many years did you, did you coach them all every year, the, all three sports, or... I coached football, wrestling, and track. I would say there was a seven-year period where I did all th three with hockey. And I'm sort of saying over 15 years, I had a three-sport coaching experience. And I believe I, I might have even had 20 years of, of coaching experience started out with one sport only and gradually I, I took on more sports. And, nice. uh, in yeah, a, I think Wally, yeah. like I, I remember uh, when, when the U.S. won the gold over Russia, we were both coaching wrestling in a wrestling tournament and the game was on at uh, one of the high schools, I can't remember which one, but I went in the staff room and I watched the hockey game, you were out there coaching your wrestlers. So I knew nothing about wrestling. I just kind of volunteered to do the wrestling so the wrestlers could wrestle. And, uh, but anyways, in high school, I, 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 high school, two years, I did football wrestling and, and track. But in junior high, 
I was 22 years in junior high. I coached every imaginable sport, you know, volleyball, basketball, badminton, uh, gymnastics. So it's quite the experience, you know. It really teaches you that every sport has its, like wrestling is incredible, the training they do and stuff. Every sport has its kind of thing that transfers. So when you're a hockey coach, you can draw from all of those things. So that was a good experience. I, I think I think I was in a bar in Minneapolis in 1980 game. I thought you were going to say you were in a bar like most of the years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was playing with the Rangers then. Yeah, I think it was post game well, or something. Anyway. Well, I was kind of looking in to see. I'm expecting the Americans to get beat because they got beat like 10-1 two days before or something, I think, by the Russians. And I expect them to get beat. And then I, they keep hanging in there and playing pretty good. So I, I, you know, I jump back and forth all the time just to see it. And then when it was right to the crux, I just stayed in the staff room till it was over. I, I, think I, was, I was young enough to be a participant in that tournament that you guys were coaching in. <laughs> the rest what, of the was, tournament. What, what was that, Tim? No, I, said, I, I said I think I was young enough to be a participant in that wrestling tournament that you two guys were coaching in. You probably you were. High school? <laughs> I went to Wisewood, but no, I'm not quite that. I'm not quite that young. No, I was. You I finished high school in '70. Did you wrestle? Yeah. Oh yeah, I wrestled. I wrestled right through high school and after high school. I wrestled. Uh, actually wrestled when I was in high school. I wrestled for the Mount Royal Tech uh, State Combine team because they didn't have enough enough guys to make a team. So, Did I you was, wrestle pro? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> what was your name? But, little Brutus. <laughs> but, I, but, I res, but I wrestled when I was in grade 11 and 12. I wrestled for Mount Royal State Combine team because they didn't have enough members and I was pretty good. Was that Mr. Weed or something? Or is it, who was the coach? Uh, oh, um, Rummy Seridiak. Yeah. I just remember that Mount Royal when you looked down onto the wrestling mat from the from the foyer. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That circular thing. Yep. Well, it's interesting. Uh, Henry Wisewood. I don't know if you know Stan Schwartz at all. Yeah. He was my football coach when I was there. Okay. Of, see, he I am coaching, younger than you. He was coaching wrestling. And uh, I told the story before. Recently, uh, I had a, a, a wrestler. He was a junior high age, grade eight, gonna, uh, grade nine, going to join next year. But he was better than anybody at my school wrestling in grade 12 in quite a few weight classes. And he... He wrestled with me, and I have phoned Stan because we had a tri-meet at Wisewood, and I said, Stan, I've got this kid in grade nine. He's 127 weight class. He's really good. Like, he can beat most of my best wrestlers. We didn't have any real provincial wrestlers, you know, champions yet. But he said, well, the weight class that he's going to wrestle is I've got a a, a provincial champion. I said, well, that'll be good for him. He should get his butt kicked, but we'll see. And anyway, we went to the meet and uh, this kid beat him. It was amazing. I, I just, Stan just looked at me. Now he went on to two Olympics. So when I uh, was re um, reading Angie Abdu's book, her brother wrestled in two Olympics, and her father wrestled in two Olympics. And mm. I wanted to talk to Angie, and I, I couldn't mm. get her phone number. So I phoned Peter Gutterson, who was the kid I, that was a wrestler. I said, do you, do you know her brother's name? He says, yeah, he's coaching wrestling at uh, Simon Fraser. He gave me the phone number. I phoned, talked to him, got Angie's number, and I've been on the phone with Andy, uh, Angie probably five or six times. She's done the mission statement exercise with me. She's written a book about minor hockey pitfalls that she's lived. And uh, now she's coaching swimming, but she's the prof. 
as well, very articulate and provides an excellent ethical background to what's going on in the real world of minor sports. So pretty interesting stories. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else coached any other sports? Dean, you must have coached your kid and others kids in other sports. Yeah, soccer, uh, basketball, gymnastics, um, mountain biking, those were the, the main ones. Like, you know, they dabbled in a few other things too. And um, Callie's still in dance. Um, Devin's still in gymnastics through COVID soccer. Um, but, um, you know, aside from hockey, but yeah, I, uh, going back to what you said, I mean, I think that was really helpful for me. My uh, coaching abilities was um, not only, you know, having to take coach education classes outside of hockey, um, but then, you know, you get to meet a new network of coaches in those classes. And, um, you know, also the, uh, the experience I had at the National Coach Institute in, uh, at UFC for a year, uh, I was the only hockey coach and everybody else, and we had we had short, long track speed skating, volleyball, um, you know, you name it. We had we had every sport there. I think there was about eighteen of us. And then my master's degree at UVic, um, we had a cohort of about twenty, twenty-two, and, and then you know, we had even more uh, coaches and teachers represented who were working in different sports again. Um, and again, just now going through the PhD stuff. I mean, now, you know, I'm dealing with, um, you know, people in field hockey. You know, it's something that's not really a big sport over here, but it's interesting because there's a lot of similarities. I had some great experiences in Cardiff um, working with the men's first division team and the rugby team there and um, basketball, netball, uh, hurling. I looked at Aussie rules, football, cricket, um, a whole bunch of stuff. And, uh, I mean, I can't even get to tell you the rules or you know, the names of the positions on some of these things, but, um, you know, just learning, like, like you know, you can kind of group these games into families, and so hockey is not considered an invasion sport, so I have a, a preference to look at those kind of sports, because you, then you can, the principles of play, um, you know, they can, they can overlap, and you can learn, so I, I think it's really helped, um, just to get new perspectives, you know. Yeah, good stuff, Dean. That uh, when you were talking about the networking, the first time in in my level three course theory, that's a long one. Taken through Mount Royal College, 